everybody, welcome back. So I have here a dining room chair that's been manufactured and um, we're gonna be reupholstering these dining room chairs. And I'm looking at this, I, I know that the seat's not gonna be a problem, but I'm wondering about the back. And I say that because manufacturers sometimes come up with very clever ways of speeding up the upholstery process. And I suspect that they did something on the back that sped them up that I've not seen before. So let's explore together. Let's first take the, let's go with the easy part with the slip seat. I, I'm, sh I'm pretty sure it's probably just screwed on like most of them are. So I'm gonna turn it over. Let's take the seat off first and unscrew. So I see one, you know, and I don't have my electric, my electric drill out, so pardon me. I'm gonna take, so we got a car, I think two, three, four, five all together. Not gonna be too bad. So that's easy. You know, we've, we've shown you slip seats before in past videos. And slip seats, don't be fooled by slip seats. They're not as easy as they look. And the thing that makes them hard, which I think I've mentioned before, is that they move on you. You know, a slip seat you, is not stationary when you're upholstering it. So that, that, that can be challenging to upholster something that's moving on you. But there are techniques. Maybe what we'll do is we'll do a video in the future about um, slip seats and slow the process down and show you the easy ways of doing that. So that's the slip seat, it has a base welt, which we'll do doing the same. But I'm really curious about this back. So um, I look in here, some, some of these are wood paneled and they're upholstered. And then they're, and they're put in, there's two pins up at the top after you upholster them. And um, there are two screws down here that hold it in place. That's one method. Usually I, I see that that's on higher end furniture when they do that. But when I put my screwdriver in here, I, I, this is wood. So I don't think there's anything in there. So that's, that's suspicious, but let's, let's turn it up again. So let's try, since we're reupholstering these, let's try to pull this piping off to see what happens. Uh, as you can see on the back, it has a desired recessed outside back, meaning you can see the wood here. That's kind of a desired look, rather than have a separate panel like the front. So now let's figure out how this is done. Let's start at the bottom so we don't do too much damage and try to pull this piping away. Now this is weird how this is on here. So let me just, let me just feel this. You know that I don't feel any wood. I don't even feel any cardboard in there. This is strange. Like I said, I think, ah, yeah, I think I know what they did. This is really interesting. So what they did here, folks, and I am not gonna do it the same way because they actually sewed the piping onto the fabric and then they drove staples in this way to hold the cover on. That's after they put the outside back on. So that's not a, a really desired way of doing it because look, look how loose this cover is. And they got away with it, I think, because of the fabric color. I, I, if they were using a light color, they would have never gotten away with this process. This is just a, like I said, I suspected it was a way of just speeding up. So. We're going to show you another, I'm going to show you a different way of doing this. Um, now, I don't have the fabric for this yet. I'm just going to go through the, I'm just going to describe what I'm going to do. So let's take this off first. Let's take a lot of it off. I bet if I get this going. It's another thing. If once you get something going, you get leverage on your, see the, the, how I'm using I wanted to go over a little tool usage with you. And uh, this is my side cutters that I'm using. And of course, we're trying to preserve the wood because this is a high gloss and we don't wanna be using that as leverage. So that's why I'm starting at the bottom. So I'm, I'm taking a really smart approach to this. Uh, I wanna to try to preserve the wood as much as I can. Not one ding am I gonna put in this. And I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna, these are really heavy staples that they use. But look, the more I take off, the more leverage I'm gonna get. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the chair and I'm gonna pull up, look at that. And, and I'm gonna give you a little tip too, YouTube. Um, it depends, sometimes it depends on the direction that you're pulling. Sometimes it pulls easier. It's, it has to do with the fabric, the weave of the fabric. I'm not so. putting much pressure on at all. Now, I, I want to avoid using my side cutters this way, right? So sometimes I might even bring the chair to me and, and firm, and get a firm, you know, tight, get it tight and then pull it. Careful when you do this because you don't want to slip and hit yourself, but you, know, you can always put it down on the ground too but it's a little tougher this way, see, because of the, because of the weave of the fabric. So I, I, I won't, I'm not gonna attack that yet. Let's try to attack the other side. See if the other side comes up as easy. 
should. A little tight, a little hotter, a little hotter than the, the right side, but here it goes. Okay, look at this. So it, it ripped easier left to right than right to left because of the weave of the fabric. And you have to kind of test that for each fabric is different. Isn't that interesting? So we are not, let me just show you that, what they did. They have this, I've never seen this before. I've never seen this, this method before, but I don't like it because you can't stretch the fabric properly. So we're, gonna, we're not gonna do it this way. So I wanted to explain after I take this back off. So tool usage is important. Uh, this back has to come off. So what they've done, is that this is a stretcher material that they use. So I don't like the way they did that either. It's not tight. We might even put a piece of webbing in there, but I'm not sure if we have enough room. Sometimes it depends on the room. It's, it's highly recommended to get at least one piece of webbing in there. So let's see if the, let's see if one side rips easier than the other side here. I'm gonna a pull. Definitely rips it easier on one side. I mean, I don't suggest, if you could use your fabric to pull like I am without rep ruining the frame, I mean, if you notice when I'm pulling, I'm holding the frame, I'm not just pulling it and, and putting stress on the frame. I definitely would advise that and pulling the staples up as you're pulling the fabric rather than one staple at a time. Now, when I'm teaching a beginner, I will have them take one staple out at a time as practice, especially around finished wood, you know, little practice uh, in the beginning to get tool usage down, you know, maybe with an awl and, and a mallet and then your side cutters, you can see how much more time that would take than this way. So we're trying to speed you up, especially for those who have been upholstering now and you want, you want to learn some tricks and this look how easy that ripped that way. If I went the other way, I would have, I would have been struggling. So there it is. It's all off. Let's throw that away. That was the outside back. So what they did was they put the outside back on first, faced out this way. They put a stretcher on, another piece of fabric over that. Then they put their foam on. And then they had that piece that they had already sewn the piping to, and they stapled it sideways, which we're not going to do. So, so what I'm going to do is I, I guess I can demonstrate on what they, on some of their fabric. So we are going to take the new fabric, the outside back, which is the only thing that probably the only thing we're going to do that they did. And um, that outside fabric, the outside back is faced out and it's going to get folded over like so, put the top first and stapled and then pulled down to the bottom, stapled and then folded up and then stapled one side down and then the other side down. It's a curve, so you're not going to stretch it too far side to side. So that gets put up there first. Then uh, the stretcher fabric goes on the same manner, okay? Now, you really have to be careful when you're using your power tool, your pneumatic staple gun, that you don't skim this way. It's very common for people to do that. You really have to have a sense before you shoot of where that edge is. So ideally, you want your gun turned um, into, the, into the frame of the chair as a way of avoiding skimming out the wood. That's kind of a pain when that happens because it's really hard to repair. So be careful of that. So I think for support purposes, I'm going to get a piece of webbing over the stretcher, but I'm not going to fold it like we traditionally do, like so, because that's going to create too much bulk. I don't want too much bulk coming out. So what I'm going to do is we're going we're gonna to put it on we're gonna staple this on like so, and we're gonna hand stretch it to the bottom like so, and, and cut, it, um, cut it down here. And we don't have to fold it. You don't wanna fold it. Okay, so the, the webbing gets on there. And then we're gonna put the chair down. I would probably be working down like so. So we have all our webbing. And then um, we're either gonna, the client wants us to reuse the foam, so and put the foam, which is okay in, in, in most cases. It's okay. I like to, as a, as, a, as a good recycler, if there's nothing wrong with the foam, why not? It's a polyurethane-based product, um, especially if it's a better high-grade foam. It's not, gonna, it's not gonna disintegrate. So for, for the sake of the landfills, we don't wanna produce more foam to put into this, and we don't wanna throw this away if we, if we don't have to. I would encourage all you guys out there to try to recycle as much as you can, as much as you can 
it's we, we're gonna we are known as probably the best recyclers out there I keep saying that I want to I want to stress that point um, so at this point we'll probably take a little cotton or dacron and put it over the over the foam and then what we're gonna do instead of what they did <clears throat> You know we're not gonna we're not gonna sew there. We're gonna we're gonna have a separate piece of fabric cut three inches bigger than the surface area here, and it's kind of hard to show you with this. Let's just say, and what we're gonna do is we could start with it folded like so to neaten it up so you don't have to trim it, and then stretched up, and stapled, and then stapled on the sides, and then after it's stapled on the sides, we're gonna run our piping. We're gonna have a separate piece of piping. And we're going to run it along this along the edges to hide the staple work. Um, maybe in a future video, we'll we'll do one of these chairs from start to finish. Okay. So thanks a lot. Uh, we'll see you next time. And also, folks, uh, we're going to be offering uh, more of a complete videos from A to Z, like on this particular chair. We're going to show you the whole process. In the in the past, we've been giving you tips on certain jumping in on projects that are half done, or just starting a project like this one, or showing how to cut fabric, showing how to do double piping. I mean, we've got a lot of videos. Our focus really necessarily hasn't been on from A to Z. We do have a, an Ottoman uh, YouTube uh, video that we encourage you to look at that we did do that, but that's very basic upholstery. But in the, moving forward, we're kind of excited. We might even be setting up studio space to make it look a little better enhanced and so, so you don't see the bathroom in the background and things like that. So hopefully we're moving ahead. We're gonna we're gonna really uh, concentrate now more on video production, um, especially since I have my son who's an ace at, at this uh, behind the camera. So thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.